We acknowledge that here in Saskatoon, we are in Treaty 6 territory, the traditional homeland of numerous First Nations, including Cree, Dene, Nakota, Soto, and Ojibwe, as well as the Métis Nation. We acknowledge with respect the history, spirituality, culture of, of the peoples with whom these treaties were signed, the treaties in which we reside, and the territories in which we reside, and our responsibility as treaty people. We also honor the heritage and gifts of the Métis people. May we live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship. We gather our hearts together and come into the presence of God in worship. Verses. In this time of remembrance, we gather to pray. For a world where no one will learn war anymore. On this day when the guns once fell silent. We gather to pray for peace to reign in every heart, home, and nation. On this day of hope. We come before you, God, to remember all who gave their lives so we could be free. Conscious of the futility and devastation of war and longing for true, lasting, and healing peace, 
We remember those from this parish who had served or died in World War I and World War II, as well as members of the armed forces from Saskatchewan who've died in more recent conflicts. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We pray together, creator of all, whose will it is to hold both heaven and earth in a single piece. Pour out your great love upon the waste of our wars and our sorrows. Grant peace in our hearts, peace in our homes and communities, and peace between nations, this day and always. Amen. Amen. Introduction to the First Reading In the Near East, covenant means agreement or alliance. It describes the relationships and is the primary word used to characterize the relationship between God and Israel. 
By delivering Israel, God has already begun the relationship. Joshua calls upon the people to respond. A reading from Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons Abraham and Norah, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. He said, then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statues and ordinances for them at Shechem. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be Thanks. to God. Our psalm for this morning, Psalm seven, a portion of Psalm 78. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times. That which we have heard and known, and what our forebears have told us, we will not hide from their children. We will recount for generations to come the praiseworthy deeds of the power of the Lord and the wonderful works God has done. The Lord gave a decree in Jacob and established a law in Israel, commanding our ancestors to teach it to their children. 
that the generations to come might know, and the children yet unborn, that they, in their turn, might tell it to their children. So that they might put their trust in God and not forget the deeds of God, but keep God's commandments. And we pray together. God of pilgrims, God of pilgrims. strengthen, strengthen our, you, Lord, our faith, we pray. Guide us through the uncertainties of our journey and hold before us the vision of your eternal kingdom made known to us in Jesus Christ. Amen. Introduction to the second mm -hmm. reading. Some of the Thessalonians are worried that dead Christians will be excluded from the resurrection to eternal life when Jesus comes again. Paul reassures them with the word of hope that all Christians, living or dead, will be raised into everlasting life with Christ. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Jesus tells a parable about his own second coming, emphasizing the need for readiness at all times. God be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to the disciples, then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bride, bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You'd go better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, oh, look, Lord, no, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
In the name of God, our creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. Amen. I want to begin by reading In Flanders Fields by John McRae, which you've heard many times before, but it still rings true. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly scarce heard amidst the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. On this Sunday, as we do every year on the Sunday nearest Remembrance Day itself, we honor the memory of those who gave their lives in service, not just for their country, but for the protection of the many freedoms that we call democracy. We remember those who died in both world wars, those who died in the Boer War of the late 1800s, the Korean War of the 1950s, and in the many peacekeeping missions under the auspices of the UN, most recently of which was the 14 year mission in Afghanistan, in which Canada lost 159 soldiers. We also remember those soldiers who served and lived to tell the tale, but came home wounded, maimed, not only in body, but in soul and in spirit. When I was growing up, one of the two guys who were buddies with my dad was a man named Doogie Trelor. He was Scottish. That's why it was Doogie, not Doug. Doogie. Doogie was a fun-loving guy. He was talkative and loved to joke with my dad and kind of pull the occasional trick. And he was, he was fun and easy to be around. For the longest time, I had no idea that he had been in the Second World War. And in my teens, I found out just by accident that he had been in the army, actually an artilleryman in the Canadian army, first in North Africa, and then up through the boot of, Italy, uh, boot of Italy. So just out of curiosity, asked him, so what was it like? At first, he was quick to respond by saying that they always got their target on the third shot. And I asked, well, how was that possible? And he said, on the first shot, you, you lined up your target. So you got your range. Your second shot to the left or to the right. And then on the third, and then he stopped. And I asked him, well, what else? And all he did was quietly shake his head. You could tell something had come to mind. And he wouldn't say another word. Some memory had surfaced that he did not want to ever touch again. Only in the last decade or so have we as a society come to understand better the ongoing trauma and suffering that these soldiers have continued to carry with them all these years. We now almost casually call it PTSD. We just rip the, the letters off, right? And yet in that is the profound need for counseling, support, and suicide prevention for veterans as they continue to carry with them their memories these many years. In these past weeks and months, the fighting in the Ukraine and Gaza have reminded us of the horrors and viciousness of war, and not just for combatants, but also for the civilian populations, and the seemingly unbelievable ease with which leaders justify starting conflicts that result in total destruction, and the suffering of innocence on both sides of the conflict, 
for, for some imagined political or military victory. So today, as members of the public, we are called to remember a sacred trust entrusted to each of us in our own generation. And McCray's words hold that trust. Take up your quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If he break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. How do we understand the words, take up our quarrel with the foe? To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. Are we to continue the war and violence and destruction until the enemy is completely obliterated? Obviously not. Actually, war is the last worst option of any situation. Do you recall General Norman Schwarzkopf? Does that name come to mind? He was the American general in the, in the Gulf War of the early 1990s who was quoted as saying, regardless of how much you plan a war, when you set it all in motion, you have no control and you just pray it works out. Then to take up the quarrel with the foe, are we just to crush them under our power forever and forever hold them and keep them in subservience so that they can never rise again? No, that will still not bring real peace. I'm just reading and I came across a term one war can be the start of generational wars. One feeding a war of the next generation as the fight continues. Is this lesson going to be learned in Gaza? The best way forward is a generation's long process of societal change, of gradual restoration and re-education of those who were once our foes and repatriate them to the global community. Japan and Germany are no longer seen as the nemesis they once were. Yet this does not go far enough. Wondrously enough, it is our Lord in his dying words that pointed the way forward for us, for the world to find real, deep, and lasting peace. When he prayed for those who were putting him to death, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. It was in South Africa that we first heard about truth and reconciliation. It is a natural instinct to want to demonize, to dehumanize those who are your enemies. And so you can do anything to them because they are causing the suffering. But there can be no peace, peace that includes ourselves and those who trouble us until there is real forgiveness and reconciliation. There, and there can be no reconciliation unless we see that our enemies are part of the living solution to finding peace. In June of 1985, British rock star Sting released a provocative song for its time entitled Russians. It spoke of the need to see our enemies as human and that it is only in our shared humanity that we can find ways into a future of true peace. Here are his words. In Europe and America, there's a growing feeling of hysteria, conditioned to respond to all the threats and rhetorical speeches of the Soviets. Mr. Khrushchev said, we will bury you. I don't subscribe to this point of view. It would be such an ignorant thing to do 
if the child, if the Russians love their children too. How can I save my little boy from Oppenheimer's deadly toy? There is no monopoly on common, in common sense on either side of the political fence. We share the same biology, regardless of ideology. Believe me when I say, I hope the Russians love their children too. There is no historical precedent to put the words in the mouth of the president. There is no such thing as a winnable war. It's a lie we don't believe anymore. Mr. Reagan says we will protect you. I don't subscribe to this point of view. Believe me when I say to you, I hope the Russians love their children too. We share the same biology, regardless of ideology. What might save us, me and you, is if the Russians love their children too. The violence, destruction and hatred of the wars in the Ukraine and Gaza only heighten our awareness and our need to work together. Russians and Ukrainians, Israelis and Palestinians, and each of us, if we think we are somewhat distanced from these struggles, to accept this deeply challenging task of body, soul, and spirit. How do we seek reconciliation and seek to forgive when our enemy is out for our death and destruction? William Countryman in his book, Forgiven and Forgiving, issues this challenge for a better future. For political action to keep it, to keep going, it must be also be built on a hope that something better can be created. And to create that better society, must, one must find a vision that includes one's opponents, a future that will accommodate both us and our oppressors in a new and more equitable public order. Only forgiveness can free us to imagine such a future. Mr. Netanyahu, please listen. Yet this does not dismiss that there are times when, as with ISIS, the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, there is no other way than military action in order to strive for the day when there will be peace. God help us all in living together in seeking God's peace and justice. Today, we gather to remember our dead. Today, we gather to remember the tremendous sacrifice of all soldiers and civilians, the dead and the living. Today, we gather to remember and to recommit ourselves to ways of living together. Yes, even here in Saskatoon, as we become increasingly diverse culturally and in so many other ways. Ways that includes those with whom we struggle and for those who struggle with us. Amen. Prayers of the people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, our God, at this service of remembrance, we praise you for all who have died that we might live, for all who endured pain that we might know joy, for all who suffered imprisonment that we might know freedom. In Christ's name we pray, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give you grateful thanks for the memory and good example of those who have laid down their lives in the service of our country. Accept their sacrifice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let it not be in vain that they have died for freedom and peace. We bless you for their courage and devotion, even unto death. 
Remind us all who mourn the loss of those who laid down their lives in war. We ask that you would be with them in their sorrow and loneliness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for both the peoples of the Ukraine and Russia and for the Palestinian and Israel peoples that they may work together to resist the use of violence and intimidation of a few, that your peace and justice may be restored in their lands. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And so, Lord God, we pray for the prevention of radicalization and rise of racism among the young people in our country and around the world, and that they may seek God's ways of peace, mercy, and justice. In Christ's name we pray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Healing God, bless the brokenhearted, all who mourn. Send your compassion to all who grieve. Grant wholeness to those who are sick or in any need. Especially we pray for Eduardo Ensaldo, Chris Atkins, Catherine Ash, Mike Glacier, Doreen Holland, Mary Hattam, Clinton Hesji, Jan Kanasanthari, Aniko and Betty Mattias, Mary Mackay, Cease Molnar, John Moore, Linda Popkin, Faye Schmaltz, Tammy Shoemaker, Edna Vibert, Mark and Wilda Watts, and Karen Wright. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And this day, we're also asked to pray and give thanks for the lives of Bernice England and Corinne, who passed away in recent days. O oh God, whose blessed son was laid in a sepulcher in the garden, bless, we pray, for these two people, that their memories may be cherished their example being a continual inspiration to all who knew them and for your re eternal repose upon them with all the saints and light. In Jesus' name, amen. So gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our God in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so may the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, creator, redeemer, and spirit, bless you today and always. Amen. Amen.
Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve our God. Thanks be to God.